Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makana Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. Today we're reviewing another SHQ miniatures build. I've realized I've had this for a very long time, being extremely interested in collecting and building all the 72nd 76 scale Japanese armor. I bought this before the Dragon kits were available to me, so they've just been sitting around ready for use. Once I dug it up after finishing the uh, Hertzer, I was interested in mangling it together immediately. I have no memory of how I've acquired this, though I do remember it did not cost a lot. It's also a UK import and has adequate warning about its uh, lead content and safety handling. Inside the package we're first greeted with this uh, fairly crude instructions. Those simple enough uh, identifying each piece, uh, making a parts count easy. And due to the simplicity of it, uh, how it goes together and I didn't have any problems whatsoever. The pieces were quite clean, with uh, very little mistake or flash, uh, a thin membrane around the wheel wells and uh, just a tiny bit of work needed off the hull and uh, turret. To remove any release agent or chemicals, the pieces were adequately washed using uh, water detergent and a soft sponge. They were uh, rewashed, rinsed, and dried as my usual method. Even though the pieces were fault free compared to the Hertzer in the way of uh, no warping and very little uh, nub marks, there was a nasty seam line that stretched on top of the tracks and around the turrets. This was easily fixed by scraping a knife across the area and applying a bit of putty to remove the rest of it. Everything was quite an easy fit and super glued the whole model together. The turret did initially have trouble uh, fitting into the hull but with uh, a knife and widening the actual opening and sanding the butt joint of the turret uh, this was able to move and articulate within 5 to 10 minutes. Now I failed to take a photo of this but first I used the Mr. Hobby metal etching solution across the whole kit. Uh, just brushed on, it's that thin. Followed by airbrushing uh, Mr. Surfacer 500. The uh, surface was slightly pitted. Don't know if it's um, intentional or not, but just wanted to uh, hide that a bit and have a slightly smoother surface. Historically, Japan as a closed off nation had a lot of unique ideas for warfare and didn't really share with other countries. Uh, this is why their aircraft, uh, ships, tanks are quite unique. And their colours are also equally interesting. They are developed by uh, Tamiya, but you have to do a bit of hunting on what's quite right for the 95s and 97s and whatnot. Mr. Hobby is uh, keen enough to release this in a uh, full box set of uh, lacquers, being the first coat airbrushed and the other two being such a tiny tankette vehicle hand-painted in uh, the configuration of what the box recommends over the lack of reference material. Building the tank was very quick, only took a day. Painting took a lot longer and was quite involved. There was all sorts of different colours to pick out unlike the Type 89. After the main camouflage colours were painted, the yellow stripes were applied throughout the place followed by the wheel wells, the tracks, the little tools, accessories, machine guns and whatnot. Then uh, followed by regular weathering and inking procedures. 
I've uh, managed to hunt down an aftermarket decal set for uh, Cold War Japanese tanks and they did have uh, a few flags and symbols in uh, respect and honour of the World War II counterparts which can be used on uh, these kits. I just only decided to display a flag on each side of the hull since I wasn't going for a particular unit type. Then uh, applied with clear top coat and we're done. Uh, I am a bit of a interest in smaller unusual countries uh, that aren't very well known for uh, their military industry and uh, things like your uh, Italian, French, Polish, Japanese tanks, very early Russian tanks are very unique, interesting to look at and also not very effective in battle, have their very purposes and uses or successes throughout various conflicts. That aside, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, different and interesting video. We're probably going to go back to a few regular styrene subjects before we start lashing out at more resonant, unusual subjects. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, stay tuned to uh, your regular Tank Gundam and tutorial content. See you later.